you know that my Tesla Model 3 is driving itself. The autopilot gives you eight more eyes and a super function that see cars around you. Well, the car do not have eyes but cameras and radar. And a super software that calculate things that could be a threat to the car. Still you have to pay attention but this self-driving feature is the absolutely top notch there is on the market. But how do I activate it? That you have to go to the driving symbol here and then click autopilot. And from here you can uh, uh, enable the auto steer and you have a warning that you have to uh, accept that this is a beta still. It is not 100% sure that it will work and you are responsible. You can also activate the navigating navigation on autopilot even here you have to uh, accept this agreement uh, and then you can customize the autopilot, navigate on autopilot uh, like this. So it will be starting on every trip that you navigate on and then you have the different kind of uh, settings, how aggressive the car will be in the lane change. The European version of Navigate on Autopilot, as of today, is a feature that will propose lane change and automatic take the exit on highways if you have the destination set in your navigator. So now we are here out driving. How to activate then the autopilot? Well, in order to do this you use this lever here and put it down very softly twice like this. And then the car will accelerate to the speed limit that it thinks that this road has here and starts driving like this by itself. This blue sign indicates that the autopilot is active. You don't have to push down this one all the way down to the bottom in order to uh, uh, activate the autopilot. If you want to disactivate the autopilot, uh, there is several options. Either you hit the brake, or if you just want to deactivate it it's like, like that, without hitting the brake, you can pull up this lever up like this. But when doing this, it's a good idea to softly press the accelerator, so to say meet the speed the car has. Otherwise the region will kick in and the speed will be reduced rapidly. After driving for some time, you get used to it. You can also steer the car out from the autopilot. This can result in a jerk in the car that can be a little bit scary, especially for the passengers that is not prepared. The autopilot depends on the lines that is painted on the road. And uh, if there is no lines, the autopilot is not enabled. The autopilot symbol is grey when the car allows you to turn on the autopilot. Otherwise, this icon is not displayed. But let's try the adaptive cruise control now once and then we have this blue circle here showing that we will be driving 70 kilometers. Uh, I can adjust this speed by moving the moving this small uh, button here up and down uh, and uh, then if I want to go on autopilot again now I put one twice and then the car starts to steer itself again. I almost always use the full autopilot very seldom I use only the adaptive cruise control. Now we will be coming up to this turn here we will see how the car will react in this turn now when this autopilot comes here 
it's quite a huge turn here. We'll see if I will be prepared here. It is breaking down. It feels that there is this this turn here, and I'm holding everything here just in case. But it turned very well in this uh, this time. Previously, like half a year ago, it has quite difficulty in make taking this turn, and it, I have to take over from the autopilot. Regarding the speed, the autopilot doesn't read the speed limit signs. It is using geo-stored speed limits. Now we can see here that the speed limit is increased to 80 km per hour and we'll look here at this one, it shows 80. One thing that is uh, uh, an issue here with this thing is that now the speed is going down to 70 kilometers again I reduced to 70 kilometers because the car will out not automatically reduce to 70 kilometers until afterwards and here is a speed camera coming up just now well so I'm not sure that the car would have the time to reduce the speed automatically before this speed camera uh, would appear here. It's 70 kilometers coming up here, the speed limit, and we pass this one here. The, the sign says 80 still, and now it reduces automatically the speed to 70 kilometers per hour. Now it's 50 coming up here, and we pass this 50 sign, and still it didn't reduce until now. If there is a policeman standing here, and check the sign, I would be caught, because not reducing the speed before the speed sign. Okay, we are driving 50 kilometers per hour here. Now the speed will be increasing, and here the 70 sign comes up, and now we'll see what is happening here. It is 70 here, but the car is not increasing the speed for some reason. I don't know why. So I have to do it manually. But sometimes it's, do, it's doing that, so I really don't know what is happening. Okay, so now I put in a destination here in the navigator. Uh, I reduced, uh, I removed the sound from the person that is actually talking here, so it will not disturb my video so much. Um, but um, now you can see that we also activate this navigate on autopilot function and here is this uh, blue um, uh, button indicating that the navigate on autopilot is active and we will see shortly when we come to the highway how the navigation on autopilot in version 10 here in Europe now works but first we have to go through some roundabouts and some traffic lights. So I have to remove the autopilot now. So I pull this one up and meet the speed with uh, the accelerator and was prepared to take over the car. Pilot for a short time again. Okay, so the car is very good at feeling that this car in front of me is braking and uh, brakes accordingly. Without me, I, I wouldn't have noticed that this car was reducing the speed. I would probably just notice that the speed limit, the speed was like coming to to like close. Now there is a road work coming up here, so now I have to reduce, remove the autopilot and uh, drive myself through this construction. Maybe the autopilot would work here, but I dare to try it out. Okay, so Okay, so now we are coming up to the highway shortly, and now we will turn on the autopilot again, like this, and we'll see how it works taking this entrance on the highway. So it's 
autopilot navigate on autopilot was automatically activated here as you can see and now I have to increase the speed because the speed limit gets 110 kilometers per hour so I'm increasing the speed I'm doing it with the wheel here 110 kilometers per hour and now we have to check if there is any okay it proposes lane change here I put the indicator and it made the lane change very nice onto the highway another lane change because there is a high, uh, truck here in front of me on how the autopilot actually works right now. You perhaps didn't notice, but when I wanted to change to the lane, to the right lane, where the speed was lower, it started to de decrease the speed upon the change. And also when I changed back to the left lane, it increased the speed to come in the right speed for this lane. This is something that was not working like some months ago when I was having another episode about this uh, uh, navigating on autopilot. So I continued driving against my destination and I recorded much more material and I will put that together in a bonus episode for these nerds that really likes to see how navigation on autopilot works on a Swedish highway. That will be a mega episode. Yeah, that is something to look forward to. A one hour um, highway drive where I use the navigation on autopilot uh, approximately all the stretch. So if you would like to take the time and watch that, prepare with some snacks and, uh, and uh, enjoy yourself. That episode will come up very soon. But regarding the autopilot, I think it's a little bit tricky with the 
autopilot situation because it is a matter of what kind of signals you as a driver sends out to other drivers. I take this example for example that I'm going on a road there is a other road coming in from the side that have a giveaway sign and uh, in my city where I live the traffic is quite aggressive and the respect for the rules are not so high unfortunately so people very often take the chance and go out in front of you even if they have a giveaway sign and uh, expect that you should adjust your speed so they will get into the to, to your lane and that makes it a little bit complicated when I drive in autopilot because when this guy is crossing my path, the autopilot is reacting quite early and starts to brake because this car was going in front of me like this. And then when I brake, the next car that is coming to this giveaway sign see that I'm behaving a little bit strange, right? Because I'm braking and not keeping the full speed. So then he thinks that, okay, then I can go in front of this car also. And he goes also on the front of the car. And then the car, my car, automatically breaks again a little bit and behaves strangely. Uh, it's a kind of um, how the car is signaling uh, my driving behavior to other traffic around me. That is a little bit problem. And of course, if the first driver would respect the traffic rule, that wouldn't be any problem. And uh, in some way, I learned to, that you shouldn't, even if this car goes out in front of you, you should continue with the same speed to not signal to the next driver that it's okay to go in front of you also. Uh, and this is some kind of culture that emerged between traffic uh, uh, and drivers. And um, it is kind of um, tricky how to do this because this kind of situation is actually quite dangerous and you should brake and maybe the autopilot is doing the right thing anyway and this is the problem that I'm getting annoyed that people is getting in front of me not respecting the giveaway sign well anyway that's all for this episode uh, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell uh, and uh, if you haven't already done so and until next time well have a great life